Rahim after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation, the jewel and crown of creation, the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives, the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one. The most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly he is the most beautiful one. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallam. As we're going through the month of Rabi'ul Akhir, the month in which a very famous, a very great man of Allah Jalla wa ala, he was, he left this dunya. For it's reported that he was born in the month of Ramadan, or on the eve of Ramadan, yani Yakam Ramadan, the first of Ramadan Kareem, the blessed month of Ramadan, the blessed month of fasting, the blessed month of the Quran, he radiyallahu an wa rahmatullah alayhi was born and he passed away in this month of Rabi'ul Akhir in the year 561 Hijri. He lived for 90 years and he's revered and regarded as one of the greatest saints, yani, Waliullah, Arif Billah, to have ever come on this earth, and certainly in the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who I am referring to is Sayyiduna Muhyuddin, Abdul Qadir Al Ghailani. He was known as Muhyuddin. Muhyuddin in the Arabic language means the one who revives the religion, who gives life to the religion. And Sayyidina Muhyuddin Abdul Qadir, his name was Abdul Qadir, slave of the most powerful. يعني القادر المطلق is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All power, all might lies with Allah jalla wa ala. And anyone who names himself al-qadir is incorrect. But rather it should be Abdul Qadir. Slave of the most powerful. The mightiest subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was born in a small village on the borders of Iraq and Iran called Jil. Hence why he's known as Jili or Jilani. Abdul Qadir Al Jilani. Yani Jil, Jil is a village that he was born in. He grew up in this village. He was taught his primary education, became Hafizul Quran, and learned and studied with the great scholars of that province, in that region. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al Ghilani, whose father and mother were both from the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, in terms of his lineage, he was Najib al-Tarafain. And not only Najib al-Tarafain, but he was Farid al-Tarafain. 
يعني نجيب الطرفين means that both his parents were Sayyids. They were both from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But not only his parents were both from the family of Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam, but every single grandparent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, from his father's side and his mother's side were also from the family. Because it's possible for a man who is Sayyid to marry a woman which is non-Sayyid. It's possible. And this has happened. Though the lineage of the son will follow the lineage of the father. You will be called by your father's name on the day of judgment. So the Sadat, the Ashraf, the noble bloodline of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama for Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghaylani qaddas Allahu sirrahu al-aziz Allah Almighty ennobled his secret the secret, the great secret that Allah gave him wa radiyallahu anhu may Allah be pleased with him and have mercy upon him every single grandparent of his from father's side and mother's side were from the Ashraf. They were noble, noble in terms of their lineage. As I mentioned, he grew up in Jil, in this province, in this area. At the age of 18, he set out to study and to move from his small village and town into the big city and the most booming prosperous city in the muslim world at that time the most vibrant muslim city in the ummah at that time anywhere in the world was baghdad baghdad was blessed it was blessed with many awliyaullah Baghdad was blessed with many companions who lived there. Baghdad was blessed in many ways. And from the ancient world, cities like Canaan, Babylon, Jerusalem, amongst them, Damascus, these are the old ancient cities, very long time. Jericho, these are cities which are mentioned in the Bible, which are cities mentioned in the Torah. Yani, human civilization occupied these cities before they went to Las Vegas and they went to New York, before they got to London and, and, and Glasgow. These are cities that were populated a long time after. In the ancient world, Al Quds Sharif, Jerusalem, Babylon, Canaan, these are all cities that existed. Human civilization lived there. Amongst them, one of the great cities was Baghdad. Baghdad has a rich history. Unfortunately, Baghdad in modern history, in modern times, uh, reached a, a moment of destruction the war in Iraq that took place, illegal war in Iraq that took place. Along with this, before this, Baghdad has always been targeted. During the Mongol Empire, Mongolian, and the, the main person within the Mongolian Empire was who? Genghis Khan, known as Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan, when he ruled over the world in the Mongolian Empire, History tells us that he destroyed the city of Baghdad. All the rich ilm and knowledge, all the power that Baghdad held, the cities, the libraries, everything he burned, the scholars he killed. So the Mongolian Empire caused terror in Baghdad. But before this, in that time in the world, around the 5th century of Islam, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al Ghailani, radiallahu an wa rahmatullah alayhi, this great man of Allah, this Arif Billah, he lived and resided in Baghdad. And there's a very famous story of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al Ghailani. 
that before he left home, his mother had given him 40 dirhams. And she had sewn the 40 dirhams inside the jubba, inside the thawb of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani. And the mother instructed the son, and the mother's name was Umm al-Khair Fatima. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani's mother's name was Umm al-Khair Fatima. The father's name was Abu Musa Jangi Dost. Abu Musa Jangi Dost, rahmatullah alayhi. The mother instructed the son that when you are out there, when you go towards Baghdad, don't tell a lie, don't, don't lie to anyone. Always speak the truth, don't lie. This was the advice that the mother gave to the son, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani. That whatever you do, whichever situation you find yourself in, whatever difficulty you may find yourself in, do not lie. My son, always speak the truth. Wherever you are, speak the truth, don't lie. So Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghailani set out towards Baghdad in this caravan of people leaving from his village, his province, his town. And on the way, they encounter some highway robbers. They encounter highway robbers. And this was a common crime committed at that time. Even now in Pakistan and in other rural areas, if you are traveling alone, you may be ambushed by highway robbers. It happens now as well. And you would be held at gunpoint, whatever you have, give us, and then you have nothing left. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani is in this caravan and a number of group of highway robbers come and they hold them all to ransom. At gunpoint, and at that point they asked the question, searching every one of them, taking from them. So they searched Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani, who's this 18-year-old. As they searched him, they found he, they couldn't find what he had. So they said, look, do you have anything? He says, I have money on me. They looked, searched again, they didn't find nothing. And they were perplexed by this answer, angered by this answer. They felt that Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani was mocking them. You say you've got money, but searching you and there's no money. So they took Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani radiallahu anhu, the leader of the highway robbers, and said, this young boy, he says he has money, but he has no money. We've searched him. He's lying to us. So the leader asked, where's this money you are saying? He said, before I left this journey, my mother, she sewn inside my thobe, inside, 40 dirhams. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani took it out and said, here you go. And the leader was amazed. The leader of the bandits and the thieves he said, what is this? You, you don't tell a lie. Why are you telling the truth? You are at a point where your life is at risk. People around you are lying and saying that they have nothing, they have nothing, and they're hiding from us. For years we've been stealing from people, and now you decide to tell us the truth. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he said what? He said, before I left this journey, my mother told me, Wherever you are, in whichever situation you might find yourself in, oh my son, always speak the truth, don't lie. Amazed by this answer, the leader of the bandits, he says, I want to do tawbah on your hands. Tawbah means ruju ilallah. I want to repent from my sins. I've robbed many people. I've done much wrong. And I ask Allah Almighty that he forgives me, but I ask Allah to forgive me on your hands. Yani the righteousness of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani was clear to be seen. 
the greatness of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani is clear to be witnessed. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he lived for 90 years. And for the best part of his youth and adulthood, it is said and reported that for 20 years, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he remained on the outskirts of Baghdad. He didn't go into Baghdad. And he spent a lot of his time in Khalwa. We have to remember Khalwa is a key, a, key, a key ingredient and component on one's journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Khalwa? Seclusion. Spiritual seclusion. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a number of years before the first verses of the Qur'an were revealed at the age of 40, they spent a lot of time in seclusion. They would go to the Ghar of Hira, Ghar Hira, and they would stay there. And they would do tafakkur, they would ponder over the state of people. And this practice of khalwa, seclusion, yani getting away from the dunya, going and living in secret, this element of privacy, to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to earn the pleasure of Allah jalla wa ala, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani, it is said that he spent a good 20 to 25 years in seclusion. 20 to 25 years, and there's many books written on his life. Even those who were against this way of life, the way of tasawwuf, the way of spirituality, many of them, the likes of Hafiz ibn Taymiyyah, ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, the likes of uh, Hafiz al-Zahabi, they have written in praise of this man, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani, because of his many manifest miracles. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Ghilani radiallahu an, spent this time in seclusion and then on the permission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam entered into Baghdad. It is said that they reached the age of around 50 and they began to deliver public sermons. 50 years of age and they began delivering public sermons. And we think we started at the age of 19, 20 and we've made it big. We are far from it, far from it. Sin Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he perfected his inner and his outer. He purified his inner and his outer. Remember, you have a zahir and you have a batin. The zahir is controlled by the sharia. The zahir is controlled by the sharia. Your salah, your zakat, your hajj, your sadaqat, your prayers, your psalm, your fasting. All of this is the zahir. Our body, what we do with it. But the batin is the ruh. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he spent his life disciplining himself. And a famous story of his is the story of the shaitan and Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani. During these years in seclusion, this light appeared over Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani. After completing worship, the light, a voice came and said, it filled the entire sky. O oh, Abdul Qadir, you have done enough to earn my pleasure. You have done enough to earn my pleasure. There's nothing more you need to do. You can stop praying from today. At that point, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he said, A'udhu Billahi min shaytan rajim I seek refuge from the devil. This is the shaytan. He is playing his tricks on me. In Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani's time, there was a scholar, a very famous scholar called Muhaddith Ibn al jawzi Not Ibn al Qayyim al jawziyyah not him. Muhaddith Ibn al jawzi Ibn Jawzi, rahmatullah alayhi, he mentions this waqi'ah. And he writes also, he wrote a book, a very famous book which you should purchase and study 
called Talbis ul Iblis. Talbis ul Iblis. Talbis ul Iblis is a book where he talks about the tricks of Shaitan. All the tricks that the Shaitan will use to misguide you. Every single trick. One of them is that the Shaitan will make you think that you have, you reach, you know, you do a lot of ibadah and takabbur. You become very proud. Okay, oh, I worshipped Allah so much. Look at me. There's no one like me. I do my tahajjud. I do qiyamul layl. And you look down on others and, and so on and so forth because you think you've done so much worship. And Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, he said, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim You are the shaitan. At that point, the shaitan, all of a sudden, this light turned to darkness and started to fall upon Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani. And he said, the so first trick was that stop worshipping Allah. Because he had so much ilm of Allah, so much knowledge and gnosis of Allah Almighty, he knew not to stop at this point. He knew that I must continue worshipping Allah Almighty and this is the shaitan playing his games. Then the second game was what? He said, oh Abdul Qadir, how much knowledge you have? Look how much ilm you have. Look how much knowledge you have that you know that it was me. And at that point, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Ghilani, what did he say? He didn't say, oh, I know a lot of, about Allah. I have a lot of knowledge. I've studied many books. No. He said, wala hawla, wala quwwata illa billah. All power, all might is from Allah. It's not me. And when asked and probed, well, how? How did you know it was shaitan? He said, the shaitan never came to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation and say to them, that you worshipped Allah enough and stop. Allah didn't tell our Nabi to stop worshipping him. The shaitan never told our Nabi to stop worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you're telling me now, how am I greater than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ I have no knowledge. وَمَا أُوْتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Little knowledge. True ilm is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who will save you, not the knowledge. It is the mercy of Allah. The shaitan... He thought his knowledge would save him. But his arrogance took over him. And then the very same shaitan used this trick to try to trick Sayyidina Abdul Qadir. And he said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This is why we must always be aware and alert of the tricks of the shaitan. He's always around us. Always with us. Always probing us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the shaitan. From the tricks of the shaitan. May we follow in the footsteps and the path of the great Sayyidina Abdul Qadir. Al-Ghaylani and his teachings, he said, Rastul ilm hatta sirtu qutban. I sought knowledge. I studied and studied and studied the sciences, the external and internal sciences until I became the pole of the saints. I became the greatest saint of my time. That at, under my feet, yani beneath my feet lie the neck of all the awliya. All the great friends of Allah Jalla wa Ala, their necks lie beneath my feet. And my feet are in the feet of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah allow us to follow the footsteps of the great Muhyuddin Abdul Qadir Ghilani Qaddas Allah Sir Al Aziz wa Akulu Kawli Hada. Sakfullah li wa lakum wa akhu dawaya. An alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. La ilaha illa Allah. 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 La ilaha illa Allah. Jud al